If Jesus lifted you, why don't you raise your hand this morning? Why don't you raise your hand and give Amen. God praise? Amen. Give God praise. The Bible declared, and I believe it, that we can be in horrible pits. And our Savior will lift us out of those pits. And if you've ever been in a pit before, it's lonely down in the pit. In the Amen. Pit. It's lonely down in the pit where you have to look up where you used to be and desire to want to get there again. And there's no ladder, there's no rope. There is seemingly no hope. But suddenly the hand of God reaches way down into your pit and pick you up and put you on a solid ground. And for that, we ought to say glory, hallelujah. Can somebody shout glory, hallelujah this morning? If God's been good to you, can you say glory, hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. We serve a good God. Everybody ought to be ready to praise God this morning, give him praise, shake the devil off. One time, can somebody shake the devil off with me? Can you shake him off? Shake him off in the next. Shake the devil off. He told you don't move. Shake him off. Get him off of you. The devil is a lie, the truth not in it. The devil's a lie, the truth ain't. You sitting here right now looking like you just got everything together. Shame on you, because we all need to shake him out. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. Every, everything ain't smiling. Don't put it on the camera this morning. We want no people to know that God is good. Yeah. Amen. And God blesses us. Doesn't God bless us? Yeah. God bless us in spite of us, and he blesses us because he's a blessing God. He's in the soul-saving business, and that's his main intent to bless us. He may bring us close to him, bring us back united with him. And for that, we ought to say, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I shall not be moved. Right, if you have your Bibles this morning, right. have your Bibles. Again, it's just so good to see Peaches and Mama Bear here. My daughter, I haven't seen her in a long time. Good to see them here. Uh, with their added supporters over at 7th Avenue New York, Uptown Church of Christ, we went to Vista. Good to see, good to see Jacquez back here from uh, uh, South Carolina. D'Angelo. D'Angelo. I'm in here by name Jaquez. I called him Jaquez for six months. So don't feel bad. But D'Angelo, uh, back from uh, South Carolina uh, for the son of his children, he said he's returning, returning back when he was here, though he wanted to worship here. And so he came back here. We're just glad to, to see him. And God's been blessing him. Uh, and he's still well and, and all is well. He's at the church, in, sorry, the church of Christ in South Carolina. We thank God for that. Uh, I want to talk to you from the subject matter of, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I cannot find repentance. Lord, help me. I cannot find repentance. If you have your Bibles and you're at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1, and actually 1 through 5, could you just say amen? Amen. I believe holistically that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And I believe that what Luke writes and what Paul writes and what the Hebrew writer writes and what Jesus says is, is true. And I wonder this morning if we as a people of God have reached a state in which we just can't find a way to repent. And we just report it. Repentance is the full turning away from something. And it is a change of mind or a change of heart. Meaning the things and the way I used to think and act and behave, I am now turning around to be more like Christ. You should be at Acts 16 verses 1 and 5. And I'm wondering this morning have you ever really considered your life? Have you ever really contemplated to the degree that you can have been able to say without a reasonable shadow of the doubt that you are living a repentful life. A life in which you can no longer go on like you used to. You can no longer sit in the church house and act like everything is alright. You can no longer just carry ourselves as if God owes us something. Where 
you have determined in your mind that that either I've got to be with Christ or move on to something else. But 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 the way I've been thinking and behaving and acting and the way uh, I've been reasoning can no longer exist in a peaceful manner with God. Have you repented in your life before? Are you still the same person given to emotions and anger and whims and railings? And are you still the same person that can be happy one day and upset the next day and in one minute and out the next minute? Are you still the same person that finds more joy out in the world than you find in the church house? Are you still that person who, if you had it your way, you wouldn't go to church anywhere? If you had it your way, you would just say, Lord, let us all in the heaven that you say, Lord, I need to repent and change and have a real relationship with you for real, for real. These texts all have a common denominator in them in that they all suggest that somebody in the text refused to repent. And my challenge this morning to each and every one of you as we examine these texts is for you to look within yourself, not anybody else, not to evaluate anybody else's Christianity, but to ask yourself, have you reached a point of real repentance in your life? Come with me, if you will, into the first text, and we'll find that Paul is traveling out to Lystris in Derby. And as he is traveling, he, 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 he finds out that there's a certain disciple by the name of Timotheus. And Timotheus has, has, has obeyed the gospel and, he, and Luke writes, Luke writes in the text that he makes a point to make uh, an assertion to let us know that there is something about this trip that is mandatory and necessary. And, and, and it's not that, that, that it's a, a, a cultural challenge or a legal challenge as much as it is a cultural challenge, but he puts in the text that he was a certain, he had a certain mother who was Jewish. Now, underscore Jewish. And he, he had a father who was what? Greek. And if you know anything about Jewish culture, you, you know that if you are a Jew, uh, you didn't marry outside of your race. But God has never been concerned about mixed marriages as much as he is about mixed up folk. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. God could care less in this day and time, and even then when you look at the principles of it, who you marry because he's more concerned about the Christianity or the doctrine that you believe than, what, than who you're married. And so we have some mixed up folk. We have a Jew and a Greek that are, are married together, but they come from two diametrically uh, opposed faith systems. Stay with me if you will. You see, she would have come from, no doubt, a Judeo a Christianity system, and then he comes from a, a, multi, a, a multiplicity of God system, which is in his Greek culture. And they have given birth to Timothy, and Timothy obeys the gospel. And, and this, is a, this is powerful because in their culture, when she married him, she would have lost her whole family, and they would refuse to speak to her because she married a Greek. Likewise, the Greek would have refused to speak to her because he had, he had intertwined, although it was their practice. Are you with me? And what's the problem in the text? The church is just as mixed up because they refuse to circumcise Timotheus. Thus, Paul has to come to the church and circumcise Timotheus, which then made other folks mixed up because Paul had just preached into the church in Galatia that circumcision was not necessary. Are y'all with me? So we got a mixed, mixed couple and nothing wrong with that. Amen. 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 We got mixed up church folk who don't want to do their job and they think they know better than God. You don't marry the Greek baby. You don't tell me who I marry who I want to marry. Somebody said it's my party and I cry if I want to. But these old mixed up church folk, the church folk, some of the message folk in all of the world. If you want some real down home messy, messy folk, just get around some church folk and they can show get nasty. I preach the sermon nasty as they want to be. You got folk to be all up in your house trying to decide who you married and if it's 
man, all that kind of stuff. But what they really do is just do the work of the Lord and hush your mouth. White, black, Japanese, green, Chinese, whatever kind of means it is, if they want to get married, they can get married. <sighs> and, then, and then these mixed up folk would not call into questions Paul's teaching because Paul said uh, over in the book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 15, you'll find that Paul taught uh, concerning the circumcision, that circumcision or non-circumcision, the cut away of the flesh and eight days. He said, it availed nothing, for we are all one in what? We're all one in Christ. Y'all, y'all with me? Y'all with me? And but now here is Paul. What is Paul doing in the text? He came down to do what? Circumcised. Now, how do you preach one thing and do something else? How do you preach against circumcision? that don't mean anything in Galatians, but then over in the Acts, you were circumcising to Moses. Now y'all know y'all would have got busy on that one. How brother him is gonna preach this? But he over there doing that. I told y'all he wasn't nothing, did he? He done preached this. But now he I'll get quiet. Y'all not say amen. I'm like, y'all know y'all done talking about poor old brother Hamilton. Just say amen. Raise your hand if you done got your son in and say, thank you, Jesus. All right. I'm a big boy. I can take that. I ain't mad at nobody. That's, that's just part of it. Part of, it's part of the race. Just say thank you, Jesus. As long as it helps you, amen. Get that stuff out. Get that stuff out. You still being respectful. I, it's good to process stuff out. And you so kind. You never said to me, that's good. Amen. That's, 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 that's therapy. Am I right about it? You got to get that stuff out because you don't get that. You might cuss me out one day. So I'm glad you talked to somebody about your stuff. Amen. 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 Mm, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. What's powerful about the text is that God signifies his acceptance of mixed marriages. Yeah. Because God says in Romans 1 and verse number 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of salvation to the Jew first and also the Greek. Are you with me? He said the gospel is going to save the Jew and the Greek. It's not the marriage, it's the salvation. It's for everybody who wants to be saved in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Regardless if you are a Jew or a Greek. Yeah. Ah, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 27. Look at your Bibles. Look at your Bibles. He said, Therefore, there is neither Jew nor who? Greek. Timothy mother was a what? Jew. And his father was a what? Greek. Church folk, you got your mind on the wrong thing. They both can be saved where? In the church. Oh, Lord, you didn't mess up, folk. Paul is not preaching against the relationship, but Paul, and Luke is not writing against relationship. He's pointing out that the church still had work to do, and Paul is not contradicting himself because tradition tradition that has nothing to do with truth. The truth is that circumcision and our circumcision have nothing to do with salvation. Uh -huh. But those that are in Christ that are baptized in Christ has everything to do with salvation. In other words, there's some stuff that you've been doing all your life that you try to equivocate the truth and you walk right here right now talking about we ain't never done it that way, raising hell, tearing up the church that has nothing to do with somebody being saved and we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. We ought to repent. We ought to repent in the name of Jesus because we are sitting around talking about our tradition. This is the way we always do it. I ain't never thought of it that way. And I ain't gonna have it. I ain't gonna put it with that. And you ought to repent like those folks should repent in the text. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So what if you ain't never call the church of town church of Christ for? Ain't no scripture say I gotta call the church. I gotta call the church a myriad of names. Well, so what if you ain't never heard that before? It relate to the truth that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. Can, a, can a person lose their soul? Can a person lose their soul because they violated your tradition? Then we have his 
It's easily found in Colossians 2 and verse number 11, where Paul writes that it's not that we are concerned about the cultural rituals or the cultural teachings of the Jews concerning circumcision. But if you don't get your place yourself in a place of circumcision of the heart and cut away the sinful deeds of the flesh, and a new person does not emerge, then we are all lost. But what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that until we have a real understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need to change our behaviors, our idiosyncrasies that tend to rise above salvation, we are just as lost as folk who were sitting there in the book of Luke. Now, in the book of Acts, written by Luke. Now, watch this. Timothy's father left that house. How do you know he left the house? Because we don't hear anything else about him. He left his family, and he leaves his family because uh, uh, they have obeyed and they are following the Jewish belief. And another man has to take care of Does that sound like anything y'all know? <laughs> he, he, he feels upset. He feels violated because under his belief system, we don't practice circumcision. And we don't practice worshiping Jesus. Now, maybe you might be a Christian, but I'm, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Greek. And the text said this was well noted amongst the Jews. And so you got folk that are mixed up. That's because I'm going somewhere here. In fact, once I set this up, this lesson will be yours. When we, look, when we leave this text, we find that his father has left his responsibility. He's gone off somewhere, and, and another man has to come into the house and help circumcise or circumcise his son. And for that, he ought to repent. We find that the church, the church itself, left to Moses to rock on his own, if he will, and refused to help him because his mother was married to somebody they didn't approve of. And we would never have first Timothy and second Timothy if it was not for God and the power of God bring all that stuff together in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the church should repent for its position in the book of Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 5. But we never find that Timothy's father ever came back to the body of Christ. And for that, he ought to do what? And be saved and be baptized and brought into the same faith and into the same place with God. Now, Mark, Mark, Mark right there. He leaves because his culture teaches him that his house has been slaughtered by false doctrine. That he has what's called a blood kill. And the Jews believed in the blood given back in 27 verse number, I believe 45, it says, uh, his blood be on us and all our children. He has a blood guilt. And so he leaves out of the house saying, I don't believe in that stuff. And then, this is my house and y'all won't go that way. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you have to let daddy go on if you're not going to be a man of God. Sometimes if daddy, if daddy going to do more damage as a Greek, then you have to let daddy go be a Greek. But as for me and my house, I have to follow who? I have to follow God.
children. How dare you let your children get up and go to church and your wife go to church and you lay down with your big ass your feet sitting out under the cover because I don't go to church. How dare you while the world is taking over your house in the name of Jesus you need to get up and get out. But sometimes you have to take the rest without even running back. You don't want to follow God. You know, there's nothing worse than a blood guilt. And a blood guilt. Every father here that allows his family to go to Christ in that mixed relationship. In other words, I believe in the church of Christ. And you don't believe in the church of Christ. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Because this confusion is often going to affect everybody in the house. You see, a spiritual father will come into the house and take things spiritually in order somebody ought to say amen. And I believe that right now. So, 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 so the child grows up perplexed. Yeah. It doesn't know to believe to be Greek. Yeah. It doesn't know to believe in Christianity. Uh -huh. He grows up confused. Because I love my daddy. He don't go to church. Uh -huh. And you say this stuff about my daddy. But let me tell you something. Jesus is a father to the fatherless. Yeah. We have to sit down and ask ourselves. If you can't teach him Jesus, you should have taught him the rest of that stuff. Every father does not lead his wife to church. I don't be ashamed of themselves. I'd rather have a spiritual father. Spirits are no father at all. The ungodly leader leading into the great world in this society that leads to my ultimate destruction. And those that can hear me this morning, you're not mad at me because I speak the truth. Do you hear me this morning? You said he's right. He's right as a man of God. I can't deny it. That I see the wrong example in my father. He's right. I've been the wrong example. I, I've come to the realization that it's time to repent of my sin and stand on that victorious mountain and shout from the top of my lungs those words shouted by Joshua who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will follow his ways. We will stand in his paths. We will obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's a whole lot of folk in Acts 16 that have a blood guilt all over them. Jewish culture, blood guilt. Greek culture, blood guilt. Well, what does this lead to? I'm glad that you, you asked this question. You can become so guilty that like this Greek father that we never found out he ever been, that you can seek repentance and can't find it. You can be in a state so bad so long that when you look for repentance, you can be, you can be so mean and so divisive for so long that you reach a point that you just can't get repentance even if you look for it. Because repentance will pass you by as your heart becomes seared with a hot iron. You, some of us have been doing what we've been doing for so long, we don't even care about the rest of the family. Notice he said he was a mother and a daughter, and to know this father still left the house. And then Paul addresses in 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy, how he said that you learned this gospel from your grandmother's house. Lord, so y'all with me so far? You become so selfish in your life that the only thing that matters is what you want and how you want it. And you can change if you want to. Well, back to the Bible. Y'all look at me funny again. Because I'm telling you, some of us, some of us have reached a point that we can't get forgiven. We can't get repentance if we want to. And forgiveness is always there. But you like what you're doing. You into what you're doing. You believe what you're doing. And you're doing it to the fullest that you can. And forgiveness and, and repentance has passed you by. Hebrews 12, verse number 16, the Bible says, he says what? Hebrews 12, verse number 16, the Bible says what? Readers, are you there? Hebrews 12, verse 16, the Bible says what? Lest there be any, Lest there be any what? Fornication. 
Come on, let's say When you get there, raise your hand and say amen. I'm trying to get through this lesson. Y'all need to help me. I wish I had five people full of spirit right now. Uh, or, or, or you say, preach is too deep for me. Raise your hand. Say, preach is too deep. Raise your hand. And then I understand why you're not saying nothing. Say, preach is too deep for me. Raise your hand. If you witness, say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Amen. All right, then, all right, then. So Hebrews 12, verse 1, he said, Let's be in the That's a spiritual fornicator. Not talking about the physical act, but a spiritual fornicator. A spirit, the person is outside of Christ because Hebrews, my folk were leaving the church. Why are they leaving the church? Because they, they have determined 